Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and I have a brilliant idea. Not this. This is a terrible idea. This is my 1992 Cummins-powered Dodge flatbed ramp truck thing. It served me faithfully for the past several months. Of course, its maiden voyage was a 6,000-plus mile round trip to Tennessee and back, which went surprisingly well. I specially built this ramp bed to haul cars around, but I kept this 8-foot flatbed section so it acts as a normal truck. It's kind of like the jack of all trades, and it's even kind of good at some of them. Last time you saw this truck on the channel, I made some minor improvements. One of the big things I did was hit this crappy red paint with some Penetrol. It certainly looks better than when I started. Also, I built a spare tire carrier, which I'm almost certainly going to reconfigure at some point soon. But it works for now. Oh, also, I put the grill guard back on. A lot of commenters got bent out of shape at the whole patina thing in the last video. I kind of want to do a whole separate video explaining why, like, not every rig is worth painting. And that certainly includes this one. At least as it is now. It's kind of a giant piece of garbage. I didn't mean that. It's okay. You're a good truck. I do love this truck. It's my daily driver around town a lot of the time. Even though it looks presentable now, I've had some different ideas about what to do with the appearance of this thing since the beginning, and today, we're going to get into that. Yeah, that's right. We're going to go ahead and throw away every single thing I did in the last video and start over. If you've been following the saga of the ramp truck since the beginning, you know I have a pretty grand vision. There's a lot of stuff I want to change on this thing. One of the big changes is going to be the installation of a 5-speed, which I finally have. This is an NV4500 from a second-gen truck. Kind of need to go through it and make sure it still has all five gears before I put it in the ramp truck. So that is not a today project, but it is coming, along with many other changes. Another thing you'll know if you've been following along is from day one, I've always intended to backdate the styling on the truck. I want it to look like something straight out of the 1970s, especially with my 70s style drag car on the back. And to that end, I've always planned to do either a complete cab swap or at least a nose swap. And that's where this poor thing comes in. This is my friend Mitch's completely broken, rusted, disgusting 1978 W100 Power Wagon. It's been sitting here in need of an engine for like months now. He's trying to sell it. One day I realized driving past it that I could just steal all these parts and put them on the ramp truck and that would pretty much solve all my problems. So today, that's what we're gonna do. We even got Alan here ripping the truck apart for me. Say hi, Alan. Hi, Alan. Step one, bumper removal. Fun story on that. That is the original front bumper that came off the 78 Crew Cab we restored years ago. That thing, of course, got fancy custom aftermarket off-road bumpers. Now I'm gonna head this one off at the pass because I can already see the comments coming screaming, crying, complaining that we're ruining a perfectly good truck here. This truck is not perfectly good. It's perfectly bad. The roof is smashed and made out of Bondo. This part of the roof is rusting off. That's not great. The floors are bad too, because of course they are. This truck was rear-ended pretty hard once and the bed somehow contacted the cab. The frame is questionable, but it looks relatively square. But because of that, the bed is smashed, and so is this really nice tailgate we also pulled off that crew cab. Also, it's rusty. Don't forget rusty. Even so, I know better than to knock this truck in the head to steal all these parts. This thing will get put back together-ish with everything we take off the ramp truck, and it'll be sent down the road for a bargain price. Somebody will want to fix this thing. I mean, it's a short bed stick shift W100. It's an awesome truck. But today is not that day. Today, I'm going to take all the good stuff with it. I need the fenders, the birdbath hood, the cowl panel, the doors, and that bumper over there, in addition to the excellent 78 grill. The grill is completely loose except for this one Phillips screw, which has bested multiple bits and my impact driver. So now it's plan B. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. Now you may be wondering why I want to change all these parts on the ramp truck. I get the feeling it's not immediately obvious on video just how bad all of this is. The door is cracked and caved in in multiple places. The driver fender is cracked like all the way across the top and here. And obviously it's been that way for a very long time, judging by this repair. And the passenger fender and the hood are pretty good. Well, good-ish. Also, nothing on the front end lines up at all. And I'm hopeful that while everything's off, we'll be able to fix that probably shouldn't be a giant gap here. 
the inner fenders on the Ram truck are like destroyed. They're cracked completely around most of the bolts that are supposed to hold them on. That's just bad. Yeah, look how smashed that is. It's actually kind of impressive. Of course, there are other problems in the inner fender area of this truck. I'll be dealing with a bunch of this in just a minute here. Can't wait. You know, if all I was after was the 78 style grill or maybe even the birdbath hood, it would be pretty easy to swap those on here and leave everything else. But as mentioned, everything else is trash. And the beauty of these trucks is the cab is essentially exactly the same. The only obvious detail on the cab that sets it apart from the 70s style one is this line. On the 70s truck, it like drops down here and this is rounded. Of course, they also added the line on the body panels, but that line ends right here. So you can bolt the earlier stuff on and it'll match on the cab perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and unload this giant wagon and then I guess I'll start taking the ramp truck apart. You may be wondering why I wouldn't just use that entire cab. Well, obviously I already showed you it's kind of total junk, unlike this one, which is pretty good. Also, this truck is soundproofed. It has a headliner. It has a decent seat, carpet, the dash, the Cummins dash. Not that I plan to keep most of that around. It's a nicer interior and the air conditioning works. So I'm gonna keep all of this stuff. I'm just gonna put the pretty sheet metal parts on it. In case you found yourself wondering about the structural rigidity of my fabrication job on the bed, I think it's okay. It's not the bed flopping, it's the entire truck. Whee! Yes. I am amazed that giant sway bar didn't hit. Things are moving right along over here. We've got a pretty healthy pile of pieces and, well, I'm not ready to start bolting them on yet, but I am excited. Before I totally disable the truck, I'm probably gonna use it to move all that stuff over yonder by the house to pressure wash it. But right now, I'm gonna take a look at that horrible wiring nightmare. One of the greatest things about the 12 valve Cummins engine is the fact that it does not need a computer to run at all. All the magic happens in the fuel injection pump right here. All you have to do is put power to that and then crank the starter and you've got a running truck. In spite of that, for some reason, these things came with a PCM or powertrain control module. Now these handled any auxiliary functions like, for example, overdrive, grid heaters, which are gonna be important in another month here, the air conditioning and things of that nature. In this truck, that PCM is completely 100% dead. It does nothing. There's so much room for activities with the inner fenders deleted. It's kind of nice. Anyway, we're gonna remove the hood now because it's pretty much just holding on by fear alone. Hey, pro tip, don't send your hood into the windshield. That's a bad idea. Okay, pivot forward. Okay, okay, all right. It's just that easy. Easy, push the door. Nice. Tell you, don't open the door. No. Sure. Basically nothing to it. You'll notice instead of pulling the whole clip, we left the radiator support in place. Well, there are a couple reasons for that. First, it is a complete rusty turd. Ugh. Second, I need the one from the Cummins. It's got all the mounts for the big gnarly radiator, the inner core, it's got holes for the AC lines, transmission cooling lines, the evaporator still mounted to it, all that stuff. We are gonna have to modify that radiator support to get the round style headlights in it, but we need the rest of it. So I'm stripping everything off the fender and inner fender to prepare to pull these parts. At the same time, as mentioned, the name of the game is Simplify. Essentially, this entire computer harness is going to go away. There are a few wires that lead down there that I still need, like the AC control wires, for example. But for the most part, that's all extra. So I'm gonna strip all this horrible tape, and then I'll just start cutting all this horrible melted stuff wire by wire till I get down to what I really need. These relays, uh, one of them's AC, that one, and I think this is the start relay. Sometimes that even works. This one, I don't know what this is. It's been laying here forever. We're definitely gonna have to drill some extra holes in the older panels to mount things like this, the grid heater relay setup. Just to really drive the point home, when I say this front end is falling apart, I mean it. You know, all the work I've done on this truck, I'm only just noticing this is an original red radiator support on an original white truck. So clearly something exciting happened. That airbox is huge and heavy. Taking that out made all kinds of room for activities. 
Of course, I am going to have to add those four mounting holes to the other inner fender. Hey, I think this factory 92 socket actually screws right into the 78 light. As long as the wire reaches, we'll be good to go. Got my finger open pretty good, because I'm dumb. Do not try this at home. Trust me, it won't be fun. Recall when I first got this truck running, the computer never worked right. Sometimes the warning lights were on inside, the grid heaters were cycling on and off for no reason. And then when I changed the battery, changed these terminals, put in the hold down and everything, it magically stopped working and so did the speedometer and stuff. Anyway, I think I figured it out. This is a fusible link, which used to power the memory power to the computer. And I'll bet you that was just barely holding together until I broke it. You know how this truck sometimes cranks with the key and sometimes doesn't? Well, uh, this is the starter relay trigger wire, so that could have something to do with it. So I'm snipping all of the computer wires one by one, since I know the truck runs without them. I made one minor tactical error, and I clipped one of the wires that goes to the starter relay. I believe that came from the neutral safety switch. There was another wire of the same exact color that split off and went to the PCM, so. Anyway, I'll splice that back together some point. There are not many trucks in the world where you can just cut out the PCM and its harness and it'll just keep running just fine. Thankfully, the 12 valve Cummins is one. And in case you're thinking, hey, I need that computer for my truck. No, no you don't. This one's full of mud. Here's what we're left with. This is mostly lighting here. These two wires run the grid heater relays, so I need to get these extended and run into the cab. I still don't know what this relay does. It's not being powered currently anyway, so that even might be extra. Starter relay, which you still have to fix. A C relay, which also has melted wiring. About half of the horrible crispy stuff is now gone. There are a couple wires still here for lights and things that have been patched. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade the repairs on those. Repair the one wire that I still needed. Clean up this wiring a little bit with some zip ties and some electrical tape. At some point, I will make sure the truck still runs, but I'm confident it does. A lot of those wires that are cut go to sensors on the engine, like the throttle position sensor, the intake air temperature sensor, also the water and fuel sensor. I might like that one to do something someday, but the vast majority of these are completely useless. As long as you're controlling the transmission and the grid heaters and the AC manually, you don't need the vast majority of the electrical crap on here. At some point, I'll probably delete the rest of that harness and thin this out even more, but right at the moment, I can't be bothered. It looks so naked now. Hmm. Well, I've been working on this horrible nightmare mess for about an hour and a half while the truck slowly falls apart around me. Anyway, it's at an acceptable stopping point. This is all cleaned up, tidied, wrapped. This is wrapped to here. The lighting stuff is wrapped. I still need to connect those grid heater wires. The horn stuff is over here. I need to nail this bracket down somewhere. I want to be able to see these fusible links. That can be important. So they're here. More of this will definitely get tidied in the future. In fact, I want to rip every shred of this horrible nightmare out. Stuff that was added previously, but for now it's functional, it's way cleaner, and it probably won't catch on fire. Yeah, maybe. There you go. Yeah, everything's falling oh, apart. Got a uh, Phillips screw down there. Really? See, why don't they just come like this? So much easier to work on. Old versus new. Ruined versus less ruined. Again, we gotta drill some holes for the air filter mount, but otherwise, should be good to go. Now this is becoming a pretty impressive mess. Huh. I was planning on using the more modern inside door panels, but now I'm thinking I might leave those black ones on the black doors. These are pretty crappy anyway. The idea was extra sound deadening, but I could probably accomplish that in other ways as well. Unfortunately, there are speakers in here and they're garbage, so I don't need to save them, but I do need to unhook the wiring for that. Then the doors can come off. Alan's currently dealing with that over on the passenger side. Oh, we gotta save my eat five fruits and vegetables a day magnet. That's important. You know, it's been a nice day till now, but uh, I think our fortunes are about to change. Yeah, here we are. Cummins is getting a bath. Preview. Yep, it's a bird bath hood. It's raining more. I got it with magic. You know, it, it kind of looked like there was an ugly weld in there. Is that holding it? Why is it not letting go? You got it? Turn 
turns out this was not a great time to remove the driver door because it started hailing sideways. Anyway, look, it's black now. Well, that was fun. Pro tip, uh, 70s and 90s strikers for the doors are different sizes. Yay. Well, now I gotta go pressure wash all the stuff. The million dollar question is, does the truck still start? <laughs> Rad sports wiggling. Fad shrouds hitting. Uh, or the radiator, the one of the two. Yeah, we better not do that. We better not do that. <laughs> Look at how fixed that is. It's got a nice body line. The door kind of works. Needs some more bolts. Man, I'll tell you what. It has been a long day. And a lot has happened. Unfortunately, after that sudden torrential downpour earlier, my phone got soaked and also died and it was this whole thing. So let's just say the video clips have been in short supply. Of course, it's dark and it's pouring rain again, so it's kind of hard to tell, but this truck is now pretending to be a 1978 Dodge. And that's pretty awesome. Now up in the front here, obviously it's still kind of naked and there are several reasons for that. First, the headlight mounting. The headlights on the 92 are up there. The headlights on the 78 are kind of downward, like two, two and a half inches, something like that. So I'm going to be removing sections of that horrible rusty radiator support out of that truck and kind of attaching them to this somehow. Screws, welds, I don't know, something. The next issue is the below grill trim piece. It did not fit at all. So I fixed that kind of. I sliced it at the ends of that lower grill opening. I cut out the middle chunk and then I folded that entire section over. I tried it once and it almost fit. I tried it a second time and then it did fit only to then run into the next thing, which is the intercooler. See this AC condenser out here in the very front? That's our main issue for that. So after brutalizing this thing for like half an hour with a couple pairs of pliers, it now fits, which is great. If it was anywhere near right for the 78 grill, I would have just used the original lower filler piece, but it's not. You will notice that these two holes are floating. There are supposed to be stands back there. Those are still attached to the 78 rad support, and I'm not going to remove those. It seems like way too much work. So I'm just going to use nuts and bolts to attach that lower filler, and we'll call that good. Another thing Alan and I did off camera was install a new rubber on that side, which is great. It's now up off the frame. Unfortunately, the one I installed in Spokane there is now half crushed and falling out because I put a slot in it, which was dumb. So now I need another new bushing isolator thingy-mabob to get this level. That means the entire nose is still going to be crooked, just less crooked, I hope. We put a lot of time into getting the doors on, sealing, and closing nicely. I'll just tell you right now, they're not really square, per se. They work. And I do think the weather strip is engaging all the way down the door, which is an absolute miracle. But I'm pretty sure my cab is nowhere near straight because we just could not get this to line up. It couldn't be done. It's as good as it will ever be, I think. And it is better than the old door, so I'll take that. Miraculously, the body lines are very close. They're not perfect, and they never will be. But they're pretty good. The gap here is exactly the same as it was with the old front end. I was hoping that would magically be fixed. I'm gonna adjust the hood rearward. Judging by where it's lined up with the fenders right now, that needs to happen anyway. It should get closer, but again, it's never gonna be perfect. Obviously, the main point of this was the style. The 78 nose, the lack of the body line, the classic look, and I love that. But believe me when I tell you that structurally, this is also much, much better. This inner fender is in, and it's fully bolted to the cab and the fender, and the radiator support, and everything is super, super sturdy, which it was not before. The passenger inner fender is not installed. I still need to drill the new holes for the air filter mount, and then that'll go in. I had all of these front end parts sitting on the truck, and I was going to go over by the house to pressure wash stuff, because there's no water over here. Basically, I'm just putting it together. I'll probably bag the engine later and then pressure wash everything. Or I won't. It's probably obvious by now that the early stuff is very close to fitting on the truck, but there's a bunch of reasons why it doesn't just go right on, aside from the aforementioned fitment issues up here. Oh, by the way, the grill doesn't fit either. The turn signals hit those supports, and yeah, I'm going to be doing more trimming and shimming and hammer beating, and we'll get there.
The hood latch is in a different location. On this later truck, it's as easy as unbolting it, pulling it forward, moving it over, and then drilling some new holes and putting nuts on the back side. On the other truck, if we wanted to put the late hood on it, not so easy. The strikers are a different size. They're smaller on the newer doors. These are the old ones and they're big and they have this shim piece on them, which really should be replaced. And we had to adjust the strikers to get the doors straight anyway, so not a big deal transferring those over. Yeah, you see how it sits up here? but not here, it's maddening. And we tried so hard to like twist the door, but it's almost touching there. So there's just nothing I can do. I still got to drill holes to mount all this stuff. That's a tomorrow Jamie problem. Oh, funny story. I'm supposed to drive this truck to Salem, Oregon tomorrow to pick up a parts car. What do you think my chances are? Man, I thought I was just going to be able to dent this to clear the light, but it turns out that's some tough stuff. You can see the fitment issue there. It hangs on the top but the back of the turn signal housing, that's what runs into that support and kicks the grill out. You thinking what I'm thinking? Just stack some washers behind the turn signals because then it fits perfectly? Nice. It's almost like they wanted you to do this, except for the light issue. Look at this. The condenser and its brackets fit perfectly inside that kicked out section of the 78 grill. I do have two isolators and mount bolts out of the intercooler right now, and the condenser is mounted off the intercooler as well. I may try to pull them in at the top just a little bit to help our light problem. Otherwise, this works. Now I need to cut some giant holes and figure out the whole headlight thing. You'll hardly believe this, but I actually cleaned the shop the other day, and I bought this giant hardware assortment from Dale of Dale's Demon fame. So now, when I need to put crazy crap together, instead of going to the store seven times to buy boxes of bolts, I can just walk over to this thing, and it's full of, like, a lifetime supply of hardware. So, we'll just grab some flat washers and uh, solve our problem that way. Now, I'm not saying I'm, like, a genius or anything, but that almost works. <sighs> it's the Turbo Valiant all over again. Oh, did I mention the bumper extensions have to come off? Yeah, the bumper extensions have to come off. All right, well, it's hamburger time. It's super late. I am soaked to the bone, and yeah, I've had enough. It's the next day, and it's kind of nice. As long as you don't look over here anyway. Ah, <sighs> what a mess. What an absolutely horrible mess. Yeah. This is my first time seeing it in the daylight. What's it like? Yep, it's black. You know I've never been one for, like, play by play, 100%, getting every little point in a video, but this one was particularly nuts. Did you see that bird? It was cool. Anyway, this has been a real crazy scramble, and unfortunately it's not gonna get any less scrambly because I need to drive this thing like seven hours today. So I'm gonna start doing all those things I said needed done. Oh, bird bath hood feature. Every time you open it, dumps water on your engine. Anyway, I'm gonna start with moving the latch. That seems easy enough. Hood latch. For whatever reason, the secondary is in the same place and the release spring popper thing is in the same place, but the catch or the striker or whatever for the latch is slightly different. On the 92 truck, it's like here and rearward a little bit. I don't know why they did this. I do know it's a completely different latch design. The original one is built into a giant plate and it sticks through a hole here and mounts to a vertical support. This one just bolts down. So all I need to do here is move it so the center is lined up with this mark I made, drill two holes, add nuts and bolts, and we'll be good to go. It does also need to come forward like half an inch, something like that, to end up in the middle of that striker on the hood. I just kind of roughly squared it up with the catch, not that you can see that. That's pretty much the location right there. I'd say that's, oh, maybe three quarters of an inch forward and an inch, inch and a quarter that way. Biggest issue here is watch the hood cable clearance to the secondary hook. Latch is moved. Seems like it's gonna work, probably. Of course, I do have some adjustment in that as well. New problem, when the hood almost closes, it hits the radiator, well, almost everywhere, but definitely here and here and on the cap, which is not great. Now, I did notice previously when I had the little fan interference problem, these brackets kick the radiator back at an angle. It actually sits like, this ish and there's quite a bit of room where it could move forward at the top it runs into a couple brackets and i'm gonna have to 
modify slightly. But I think if I just keep drilling holes, this might eventually work. All right, good news, bad news. Good news, I can fudge this mounting like half an inch and get the cap to clear the radiator. Unfortunately, the shroud is just kind of a no, especially these mounting points. But wait, because it gets worse. Somehow yesterday, moving things around, we ruined this radiator even more than it already was. Now this thing has been leaking for a long time, but now it's like a steady drip. And I can't even really see where it's coming from, but the long and the short of it is, this radiator needs to go. This thing sprang a couple pretty serious leaks back in Oklahoma like three months ago. I managed to fill it with some magic sealing stuff and drive the rest of the way without major issue. And the leak had slowed down substantially, but yeah, it's back with a vengeance now. The worst news is the replacement radiator won't be here until 1 p.m. at the earliest. Also, it's $400, so that kind of screws up my plans for today. Yay! I've been wrestling with this whole grill guard, no grill guard thing. I really want it. I like that little semi look that's kind of the whole goal for this thing, but I don't want to hide that beautiful 78 grill. What I think I'm going to do is just pop those horizontal bars out, which is really easy. And that'll leave me with the surround and the push bar sections. We'll obviously put that on the nice bumper that matches the front end. And I think that'll be a good look. I could be wrong, but we're going to find out. You know, if there was ever a grill that needed guarding, it's the 1978 Dodge grill. Those things aren't usually as nice as this one. I would like to keep it that way. Well, the horrible leaky totally ruined radiators out. Don't worry about the rainbows, that's an unrelated thing. The hood latch is in position and carefully adjusted. And we did get the hood latching, but we had to smash this with a hammer a good bit. The new style latch interferes right here. Basically, the striker would go into the catch thing, but it wasn't able to swing over because it was contacting. The newer style hood just has a big hole there, but some gentle application of a hammer here solved the problem. Do you think it might've been time for a coolant change? I'd really like to flush the block. Well, I'd really like to do a lot of things. We have so much time into getting that hood to shut and be partway level and on the rubber bumpers. As you can see, it's not there really. It's almost flush with the fender, it's a skosh high. Here it is noticeably high. The problem is just the late style latch. There's no adjustment this way. So I was beating that rad support with a hammer and I did get it to rock down a little bit, but there's only so much here I can do. It's on this bumper. So that's good, shouldn't wobble around too bad. This one, it's like just off of it. I'm about ready to just call it though. I mean, I don't know. If I cut a big hole and figured out some way to put the early style latch in there, you know, that could work too, but I think this is probably good enough. There's something you need to understand about these Dodge trucks. They weren't the best built. I thought for sure we were gonna be able to get this gap to go away with this new front end. It was always there with the old one and I was always disappointed by it. It turns out, it's just kind of how it is. The fender and the hood are roughly aligned at the front. The fender can't move back any farther because it would hit the door. The door can't move back any farther because it would hit here. That means that everything's pretty much where it has to be and there's a giant gap. Here's another line that's totally wrong. It's almost like the entire upper section of the door is twisted like this, but I don't think so. I think it's the cab. I mean, obviously it's smashed from every direction anyway. I never had any delusions that I could get this thing perfect. Just a little nicer would be nice. CB antenna mounted. What you doing? I've been staring at these trucks trying to figure out this headlight thing for quite some time now. I think what I'm gonna do is just cut this section out of both sides of the 78. And I'm gonna get this little stamped area that'll line up with the stamped area on the 92 truck. I can use that to just sort of put it roughly where it needs to be. I'm gonna cut a big hole in the 92 rad support so that that will go in. I'm probably just gonna use self drillers to attach this to the other radiator support. That way this metal will be laying over the old metal. I can make little adjustments if necessary. And though it will be like that much further outward, I don't think that's a problem. You really wanna carefully plan and measure what you're gonna do before you just start cutting. So anyway, I started cutting. Actually, I handed Alan the implement of cutting. That seems to have worked out well. Okay, here's what we've got. Notice, of course, it won't sit back all the way because I still need to cut that back panel. 
I'm also gonna have to drill three holes for the adjusting slash mounting screws to go through. That's not a big deal. Oh, actually I only have to drill two holes. That one's already over a hole. Nice. All right. Dude, this is gonna work. Look, it's even like kind of sort of centered. And there it is attached to the truck with the one battery tray bolt and five self tappers. I think that'll be just fine. I could have gone all crazy trying to weld this in here, but I actually might need that for future reasons. Don't worry about that for now. Anyway, this is gonna work well. It did end up pretty much perfectly in line here. I fudged it down just a little bit to line up perfectly with the grill opening. And that actually put us a little bit off of this mark. But I think it's close enough. With a quick spritz of paint, you can't even tell I was there. Passenger side, cut out. Come on. Just metal fatigue is my friend. There you go. Buckets, done. Everything's cleaned and blacked out. Mostly, except for the stuff that was wet or full of dead bugs. It looks way better anyway, I'm happy with that. I've got shiny, bright, round, sealed bulbs on the way. The turn signals are even gonna reach and fit right into the 78 blinkers. Alan's been busy over here. The W100 kinda looks like a whole truck again. Except of course for all the parts we cut out of it. Well, I certainly wasn't gonna put crappy old round headlight bulbs in the truck, so I got some of these fancy extra vision ones. They are supposed to be slightly brighter than the factory ones. I guess we'll find out if that's true. Hey, look, they work. Now that the side markers are actually kind of cool, I decided to make them work. Very nice. You'll never believe this, but the grill is attached. The light sockets are in. Everything's all good. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it, both headlights are like out a tiny bit, which really doesn't make sense. Anyway, I'm good with it. So now we've got the older style bumper, the grill guard, all the inserts taken out of the grill guard, and we're working on getting that fitted to the truck. I think it's gonna look awesome, maybe, but we'll see. The new radiator has arrived. It's amazing. It's made of aluminum, which means it weighs like, I don't know, half or less what the old one does. It's also slightly bent, but I choose not to worry about that right now. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got all kinds of time into trying to get this bumper and grill guard slightly less crooked. It's very obviously low on this side and high on this side, and that may well have something to do with the body mount bushings, but uh, well, they're not that messed up. Let's just say that. All right, good news. The new aluminum radiator somehow magically fits roughly where it's supposed to, and the cap does not hit the hood like the old one did. Bad news. I'm gonna have to delete the fan shroud. At least for now, it would require extensive modification. It's half broken anyway. It's been flopping around this whole time. So I'm gonna run without it. I can already hear the comments ringing in my ears saying that that's stupid and that a mechanical fan without a shroud doesn't work. Well, two things. First off, yeah, it does. And second off, the Cummins is like the coldest running engine in the universe. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Simply getting rid of all these horrors in the old radiator is gonna make a big difference. Yeah chalk. Meanwhile, you may have noticed that these doors have tiny stock mirrors, which is cool, you know, kind of, but this isn't some half ton. This is a gigantic crap hauler, so I need something I can actually see in, and to that end, I ordered some West Coast mirrors. This has always been my plan for the truck. Some assembly required. I'm going to have to cut the bottom here to try and get the angle right with the door. Overall, though, I think this is going to be awesome. I do need to get some of those little tiny round things in the corners like I had on the old mirrors. I've never been a fan of the big gnarly jungle gym mirrors. For one thing, they just slowly ruin your doors. Yeah, also I don't like the way they look at all. So I think the straight up and down style is gonna be great. Now the good news is I really did want to upgrade to an aluminum radiator anyway. I just ended up not having a choice. It's all full of coolant and I think it's good. I am actually gonna pressure check this one. I don't usually bother with that, but I don't want cooling system leaks on my ramp truck, ideally. There's just nothing like cutting brand new parts. I've got the bottom jammed all the way in, the top extended all the way out, and it almost doesn't work, but I figured out a trick. I'm gonna mount it here on the pillar instead of up here, and that way, because the door's angling down, it'll kick the top out, and it should work. I hope. Either way, I'm about to drill holes in my new door, so that's special. 
it's not straight up and down. It's close-ish, but I can tell it's not in line with the headache rack, and that is maddening. Anyway, it's a mirror. I don't know, I may have to modify this more eventually. If this was like an inch longer, it said in the instructions to make sure the vent window clears. Well, um, it mostly clears to like there. Oh, I love it. This thing needs a bath. I'm really running out of time here, but I'm gonna try and get this mirror on and then take this thing for a test drive tonight. Two mirrors, nice. I can almost see behind me. Remind me to install backup lights. I've reclamped both of these connections that we had to loosen to do the radiator. And that one's still leaking. Never leaked before, of course. Yeah, I probably should have gotten new hoses, but I didn't feel like it. Anyway, I'm gonna reef that clamp down some more and hopefully it does something. All right, I think we're good. I think, I hope. Okay, obviously they're still flashy and horrible. I haven't fixed that. And the defrost hasn't defrosted much yet. But look at these headlights. I can actually see things, which is crazy. The last set of headlights were actually upgraded too, but these are the extra visions. These are great. I can see, I can almost see too well. I'm planning to put these on a relay as well. This thing is gonna have the best headlights of anything. That one clearance light that's always dead is killing me. Sometimes this works. Come on. Yeah, I guess it's just dead dead now. Anyway. Time for a highway test run. A little shakedown. We'll see if anything shakes off. Oh yeah, I forgot I deleted the door speakers. Gotta get that fixed at some point. I do really like these mirrors. I can see things in them. I like that they're higher up and taller. That's great. Reverse lights. What a good idea. Okay, I gotta put shims under the locks for the wing windows because both of them whistle. Not surprising. Other than that, there's almost less wind noise. I don't know, there might be a little more on that side. It's almost silent over here, which I cannot believe given the way this door fits. Also, there's no hood pad right now. The one on the old hood was just disgusting and destroyed. It's not as loud as I expected. I'm definitely gonna get one of those because I want this thing to be, well, not loud. Overall, it seems good. There are no horrible banging noises. Nothing seems to be falling off. It still runs, obviously. I did reground the speedometer, so that's winning with us. Oh, again, in case you're wondering, the PCM, which I ripped out with prejudice, has nothing to do with the gauges. They all work perfectly still, or at least just as well as they worked before. High beams. Yeah, those do something. Oh, stop. Don't be like that. Oh, yeah. And nobody died yet. Just look at it. Don't look at the crooked mirrors. I've got a plan for that. <sighs> Don't look at the goofy angled antenna either. I think I need a spacer. Every bit of two days. That's what it took to take this truck apart, take that truck apart, and then shuffle everything from one to the other. Obviously, that's not to suggest it's done. I need to knock a bunch of dents out of the cab. The cab is gonna get painted black. The headache crack is gonna be modified so it can be removed, painted black, the back of the cab can be shot, and then the headache crack can be put back on. I need to cap these holes or something, that's hideous. I have got to paint behind that cowl intake. To say nothing of the jams, every little bit around these black doors and panels is, well, obvious when it's not black. Someday I think this truck needs a new cab anyway, but that's another story altogether. And of course, I've given you a giant list over the course of this video of other things that I'd like to get done. Oh, this is hard to do with one hand. Just bird bath things. Anyway, under here, it's a whole lot tidier than it was, but again, there's a laundry list of projects to finish. The literal rat's nest of wiring cleanup over here is only the beginning of the electrical odyssey for this thing. The rest of the engine electrics will be gone. I'm gonna redo all the accessory wiring. Pretty sure the clutch master cylinder has to go in that hole so I don't have much of a choice. Someday, everything is going to be nice, clean, and tidy. Maybe even bolted down. The slightly crooked grill guard, absolutely maddening, but 
there's not much we can do with it. What's half an inch among friends? Now I'm not gonna stand here and lie to you and tell you that Alan and I are like expert body men. We got all the panels to fit. The doors work, the hood closes. It's kinda sorta aligned. It is not perfect. And again, with this cab and this frame, it never will be. I gotta tell you, this little short bed with all the takeoff stuff looks kinda awesome. Yeah, this poor truck's looking a little worse now, but it does still look like a whole truck. Someone out there is gonna wanna save this thing. It's a perfect candidate for a complete rebody. Say if you had a nice, clean D100 short bed, it's gonna need a radiator support. But that thing was rusted to bits anyway. I refuse to feel bad. You know, I am gonna miss the seasoned red look. Is it too late to change my mind and swap it all back? I do now have an obvious color difference inside. Oh, and a leaking vent window. I'm gonna need some black interior paint. More on that later. I would love to wash all this stuff. It looks terrible. I would love to start on the touch-up paint. Of course, it's pouring right now, and it will be for the next week and or month and or six months. So for now, this is what we got, and I'm pleased. I probably don't have to remind you at this point that this truck is far from done. There's a ton of stuff left on my list, like a ton. This is going to be like one of those lifelong projects, and I'm still excited for it. For now, though, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this. As ever, thank you very much for watching. And remember, sometimes you're the dog, sometimes the tree. Uh-huh. Oh, one more thing. My sincerest thanks to Alan. There is no way on planet Earth I could have gotten this whole job done in two days without him. Hey, it's a good thing we got it put back together, too, because I have to go on some crazy rescue mission to Idaho now. More on that later, I guess.